Hello everyone and welcome back to Professor Lightning in the Diabolical Box where we are looking for a kid that's probably a cat. And this room is finally open to us so of course we're going to ransack the place. Oh gosh, this dress is big enough to be a bedspread. Oh, rude. <laughs> Look. Oh. Oh, that flower vase looks like it cost a chunk of change. That's true, but lovely decorations really do wonders for a room. It's doubly true for flowers. Tell me, Luke, what do you think of flowers like these? Crazy daisies. Now for something on the flowery side. Of the three pictures labeled A, B, and C, one is actually the same as the picture on the far left. However, the image on the far left has had its contents flipped left to right and its colors inverted and need and changed to black and white. Of A, B, and C, which picture is the same as the black and white picture on the far left? Whoa. <laughs> That's trippy. Okay, so for one thing it's mirrored. And then the colors were inverted and made black and white. This is crazy. So the yellow will show up as black on that picture. Oh, all right. I can uh, I can eliminate one right off the bat. Uh, it is definitely not C. I think I think the answer is A, but it also doesn't help that they're together. So I think that's like clouding my judgment. Can I find anything wrong with B? Can I how can how are how are A and B different from each other? I'm trying to I'm trying to see this. Alright, I see one one splotch on B that doesn't seem to exist in A. Also doesn't seem to exist in the picture, so that might be that might be it. It might be A. Is that really the only difference? Wow, that's mean. That is mean game. Is there something else I'm not seeing? It's like, oh, I, oh, I like this. This right here, that's the only... That is the only difference I see. And it doesn't exist in A and it doesn't exist on the one on the left. Wow. <laughs> hmm, let's see if this works. All right, good. That was it. That okay. Almost too easy. That really is it. Image A is the same as the black and white picture on the far left. As shown above, picture B and C have slight variations from the image in question. I mean, the ones in C were pretty, like, clear to see. That one little splotch on B, jeez. Yeah, nice job. Not all puzzles will be such a breeze, but uh, let's keep moving for now. Crazy daisies. <laughs> oh, that was real. <laughs> Sweet uh, baby boy. How could she sleep at a time like this? I imagine she tied herself out, fretting over her child's disappearance. Come, Luke, the sooner we find the lad, the sooner we can put the poor lady at ease. Yes. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna listen to you snore anymore. I just wanna rifle through your things. How's there not Oh there we go. I'm gonna say, how's there not a hint coin in the purse? Nope. Oh, take a look at this, Professor. It's food scraps, if I'm not mistaken. Do you suppose Tom wandered into the kitchen to grab something to eat? Hmm, well, it is possible, though if that's the case, the child certainly is lacking in the manners department. Maybe that doesn't seem like the type to travel light now. That, that seems true. Yes, another hint coin. Oh. 
Say, come to think of it, why don't we have a flower vase in our room? Uh, this is just a guess, but uh, it strikes me like as the sort of lady who demands the finer things in life. Unlike you, Luke. I'm gonna steal your. I'm gonna steal her wine. No. Uh. Like. <laughs> Leighton goes in to reach for the wine. <sighs> Pulls his hand back. <laughs> no, 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 no. He reaches in, and then as soon as he starts to get his hand around it, she reaches for it. Pulls it in, takes a gulp, puts it back down, and doesn't wake up the whole time. That's what that's what really happened. That is uh, Professor Layton and the Vanishing Wine, Part One. <laughs> um. Hmm. Well, we came from the other way, right? Yeah. Is everything all right, miss? I'm just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Wait. That was Tom. Say, does that lady seem kind of uh, familiar to you? Hmm, yes, now that you mentioned it, something about her did seem rather familiar. What? Yeah, I'm curious what happened to her after the last game. I thought she was just coming to hang out with us. Uh, oh, you're saying the same thing. Oh, sorry, miss, but right now we are busy searching for a small child. Have you seen a young boy wandering by himself around here? Uh, probably missing a shoe? A little boy, huh? Nope, sorry, mister, that doesn't ring any bells. Oh, oh, what happened? Did he get lost on the train? Hmm, yes, unfortunately, we haven't been able to track down the missing tot. You know, I probably shouldn't spread rumors, but hey, I've got nothing else to do. Did you know there's a weird old lady staying in this car? What if she kidnapped the little one and has him stowed away in her room. I know it's probably not true, but what if? She's just so bizarro, I can't help thinking that. But if I could get but I could get in trouble for spreading rumors about patrons, so forget I said anything, okay? A strange other lady, huh? I wonder if we've seen her around. Your guess is as good as mine, Luke, but it certainly does make one wonder. Give me a puzzle. I'm totally dying of bottom on this train. I seriously cannot wait for this to quit this gig for a real job. Alright. Oh no! Oh, I gave your voice away. Alright, that's fine. We've, we've already re reused a ton of them. Uh, hello there, sunny boys. Ever get all knock kneed and goosebumpy from a terrifyingly hard puzzle? Well, have no fear. The beautiful and clairvoyant Granny Riddleton stands before you, ready to help. I should have known. Uh, who else could this tiny house belong to? Hey, wait a second. What are you doing here, anyway? Mm, so you've heard of me, eh, Shorty? Good to know I'm still a hit with the youngins. <laughs> what do you mean, of course I've heard of you. We've met before, remember? Mm, nope. I suspect you've got the wrong granny, boy. I've never seen you before. But you're here now, so that means you want to hear my spiel, right? Mm, not really. No, oh, no need to be so modest. Allow me to thank you for visiting me by bestowing a little tidbit of information on you. My specialty, you see, is puzzles. Puzzles people forgot about. Puzzles people miss? Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? No need to turn red, it happens to the best of puzzlers. What I do, you see, is I take those poor, lost little puzzles and invite them to come stay with me. I imagine any puzzles you left behind have found their way to my hut as well, if you want to say hello. If my hut is empty, then you clever lads will just have to go out there and find some more puzzles. Now why don't you take a peek inside the hut to see what's there? Yes! All right, that means we're doing good. I like that. Anything else in here? Uh, did she ever give any puzzles herself? I don't think so. Yep, did that. 
So then do I not need to do anything? That seems weird. Oh, and she's gone. Alright, never mind. Car 7. Might as well keep going, I guess. Oh, hello. Hold on. I'm gonna just look around. Alright. Guess I'll talk to you. Oh, a passenger. Sorry, sir. I didn't mean to get in the way of you using the deck. Oh, you're not a passenger, too? Nah, I'm just the mechanic on the train. I ride along with her in case something goes funny. But as you might figure, she's as smooth as butter. Makes my job pretty easy. In fact, I got so much free time that I started making up puzzles. Wanna take one for a test drive? Surviving in the wild, okay. After years of bad business, a local zoo has finally run out of money to feed its animals. Bellies rumbling for from days with no food, the animals make a plan to escape the zoo. After prying open the bars of their rusted cages, all the animals attempt to find their way through the maze-like walls of the zoo to the exit. Tap the picture of each animal you think made it safely out of the zoo, and then tap the Knit to answer. Just remember the animal shows its true colors in the wild. So like, say the lion would eat the rabbit. Okay, so let's see. Can the rabbit get out any other way? I mean, theoretically, can the lion eat all of them? Oh. The giraffe doesn't seem to be able to escape at all. Alright, that's a dead end. That's a dead end. Those are dead ends. Alright, so that can't be. Oh, alright, alright. Alright, that doesn't work. And then through... Dead end, dead end, dead end. Okay. So hold on, so... Giraffe can't get out. Those can't get out. And the tiger can't at all. Alright. Oh, I get it now. Okay. So only the rabbit and the lion even have a path out, right? But, um, the, I don't like the rabbit's odds. So it's, it's just going to be the lion, isn't it? Unless that bunny books it. <laughs> Which, I don't know, I, I could see, I could see a, a rabbit with that kind of ma- eh, no, it's probably gonna take a wrong turn and get eaten. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go lying. <laughs> and now, to test my theory. Yep. <laughs> and there we have it. Sharp thinking, the only animal that will safely escape- to freedom is the lion. While both the rabbit and the lion will make it as far as the path to the exit, the second the lion spots the rabbit, he is guaranteed to eat it. Yep. I feel like, like 
you have to know what it's going for, because technically I don't think there's anything that says that the the rabbit will necessarily or the lion will necessarily eat the rabbit the second they come into to contact, because it doesn't even I guess they are kind of the same distance. I'm telling you, the bunny books it though, it has a shot. Hmm, hey, what's the big idea? Don't you know it's hard to pass time with puzzles when you solve them so fast? Right? We still have like 10 minutes of episode to kill. That was... Should have milked that for a lot longer. What else you got? Hmm, don't suppose anything on the train's gonna break, do ya? I'm dying for something to do. Wait, I didn't get anything out here. What? What am I supposed to do? Have you seen a kid? I'm so confused. Uh, uh, search for Tom. All right. Let's see if anyone shows up as we just like go through the cars here. Ah. You have a puzzle? Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a little boy wandering around with only one shoe? No, I don't believe so, but come to think of it, a couple who was just here were talking about a child. Interesting. Do you have any idea where we might find this couple now, my good man? I believe they're staying in the fourth car, sir. May I recommend paying them a visit? Oh, that's another one we couldn't go to. Wonderful suggestion. Thank you for your assistance. Come along now, Luke. Let's go drop in on the couple in the fourth car. Professor, Professor and Luke decide to search for the couple who saw Tom. Nope. So man, you really cannot talk to that couple in the back. Alright, so in here. Okay, same same thing as before. Where are my Really there's no Whoa there, young fellow. You're in the wrong room. My wife and I are staying here. Uh, dreadfully sorry to intrude, sir, but we are searching for a lost little one. Did you happen to see uh, or hear anything pertaining to this? Oh, sweetie. I think they might be talking about that darling cutie pie who just passed by. Remember? Oh, uh, yes, yes. He was a cute one. He was small and very clever looking, I'd say. So you did see Tom, then. He's been missing for a while now. Uh, no, whether he was a girl or boy, truth be told. Tom's a right nice name, though. Oh, pish posh, dear. I'd bet my best mall walker it was a girl who passed by our room. Hmm, that is not you mentioned it. I had a feeling that scamp might be a little girl. But until you stick a ribbon on its head, who can really tell, eh? Now I'm all turned around. I don't have the faintest idea who we're talking about anymore. A lot of like, grandmas in this. What? I'd say, but it looks like this hot lead just turned cold, Professor. On the contrary, Luke, we may have stumbled onto some extremely valuable information. Well, what do you mean, Professor? Hmm, you see, first let's return to the scene of Tom's disappearance. Return to the site of Tom's disappearance. I don't remember where that was. Also, do you have... Yeah, there we go. I knew it. I'm sorry. I couldn't be of more help to you. It was nice talking with you folks, though. Let me give you a puzzle for the road. Oh, thanks. I was just thinking, if only they would have given me a puzzle for the road. Eight people are playing an unusual communication game. In this game, one person has to get a message across to seven other people. It takes one minute to pass along the message, and each time the message is spoken, it can only have one recipient. Using these rules, what is the shortest amount of time in which in minutes for messages to pass to all seven players. Okay. So that's one minute. Oop. So that's one minute. Two minutes. 
minutes. Right? Because can they both do it or does it have to? I. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So is it seven minutes because it, like, each person has to, like, telephone it? Or can it be like I said, where it, like, branches out? So do I. Eh. Right, so that's one, two, and two. And then, so then I have four people who can then pass on three, 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 three. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I almost put, after all that, I almost put four. Whew. How you know it's the end of the recording session. <laughs> Puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. Like for the day. It's uh it's the end of the day. Very nice. If the original messenger spreads the word as shown above, the game can be completed in three minutes. During that time, the original messenger can tell three people the message, and the people who hear the message within the first two minutes can go on to become messengers themselves. When an emergency arises, information networks structured in the above fashion can help get the word out fast. Assuming everyone retains the same message. We've all seen how that goes. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. That's the answer. Pair of sharp tacks to you are. I'm downright impressed. Still don't get your hopes up about finding the little one. He could be anywhere. Oh, goodness, listen to my husband. Sometimes he can be a little negative without realizing it. I, for one, am rooting for you. Best of luck in finding that little girl. Or little one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, did we get a camera piece? Was that that? Yeah. Right? Oh. That's not too bad. Anything else here? Do you, oh, do you have any more puzzles? No. Nope. Okay. Ah, Inspector. Tell me, are you any closer to uncovering the whereabouts of the missing child? So you two are still flipping over the furniture to find that type. Hmm. Hmm, do you mean to say that the child has been found? No, no, not at all. What I'm saying is the child is no longer on this train. I've asked everyone aboard, but no one gave me an answer that suggested they'd seen the lad. This led me to the conclusion that the poor child either got off earlier or fell from the train. Fell off? Uh, yes, it's entirely plausible, given the way children love to run amok. We combine that with their oversized heads, you've got yourself a recipe for disaster. I'll contact the railway police at the next station, so feel free to give up on your search. Uh, just a moment, Inspector. The windows on this train are mounted high and every exit is manned. Given the situation, don't you think it's unlikely a child could have made it off the train unnoticed? Alright, I'll humor me. Humor you. So tell me, Leighton. Where do you think this elusive ankle biter got off to? Hmm, that I can't say, but something tells me we've made a rather large misassumption here. Is this where we figure out it's a cat? <sighs> There's just no reason with you. Fine. Keep playing detective. Nothing will come of it, I tell ya. Nope, that's not the point where we realize it's a cat. Okay. Can I go backwards now? I can! Ha! Hmm. What's on your mind, my boy? You look distracted. It's hard to put my finger on why, but I feel like someone has been watching us for a while. You too, then. I've been feeling the same sensation myself. Do you think someone might be telling us? Hmm, certainly possible. Keep an eye out for anything unusual. <sighs> Wait, hold on. I don't want to go... Ow. Oh. What if we just took a really quick peek? No can do, little guy. You need a ticket to do that. I tell you what, your pal Sammy Thunder has a puzzle that'll take your mind off that door. Check it. Oh, all right, cool. An 
unknown number of people are riding a train. At the first station the train pulls into, one-sixth of the people on board get off. At the next station, one-fifth of the remaining passengers get off off. The pattern continues so that at the next stations, one-fourth get off, then one-third, then one-half. Then at the final station, all passengers remaining exit the train as well. Assuming no one got on the train during the ride, what is the fewest number of people that could have been riding on the train when it set out? Ooh. That's tricky. I'm going to pick a number. Let's just start with, say, 20. Let's start with 100. No. That one sixth, I hate it. Just start with six. Uh, Alright, so one six get off, so. So we have what, 50? And then one fifth get off, so that'd be 40. One fourth get off, so that would leave 30. One third get off, so that would leave us with 20. Half get off, that leaves us with 10. And all the remaining ones get off the train. All right. So could we do that lower? So 30, 1, 6, that would leave us 25. One fifth get off, that leaves us 20. Fourth get off, leaves us 15. Third get off, leaves us 10. Half of them leaves us 5. So 30 would work. Twelve, ten. Oh, that's ugly. That gets to be ugly math. One fifth get off. No, that leaves us with eight. All right. Yeah. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Fourth get off. That leaves us with uh, six, four. Oh my god, it is just, it is just six. Alright, I did way more work than I had to. Uh, that helped though. Like, just picking a number and, and making it work, I think, got me on the right track. I think if I tried to do this, there's probably a formula that I'm sure if I tried would have made things worse. Here goes. Cool, alright. That was almost too easy. Good work. If you assume the train started out with six passengers and only one person would have to get off at each station, this puzzle can be really tough if you don't remember to reduce the number of people remaining on the train at the, each station along the way. Yeah. And that's how that one goes. Well, show's over now. It's the movie, will ya? Folks in there find other passengers hanging around outside their door. I'm gonna get near full. Cool. All right, well, that's what we're gonna call it an episode. Ah, I hope you guys are still enjoying this as much as as I am. Uh, I've been really impressed with the puzzles. Like we had, I think really t two that were quite similar to the last game, but a lot of them have been fairly unique, uh, which is impressive. So. I'm enjoying it. Hope you are as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.